Okay, let's jump on the brake test four. Let's talk about this. Uh, Non-vented rotors are made of made of solid metal are best for larger, heavier cars and light trucks. Think about non-vented rotors. Where do you usually see non-vented? When I say non-vented, it's just like one solid piece that doesn't have a vent, huh? That's false, actually. You're going to not put non you You won't put non-vented rotors on something that's going to be working out hard. You may see non-vented rotors on a Honda car or some little car that doesn't have brakes that work all that intensely. Uh, the caliper is a housing that contains the pistons and the brake pads. Actually, that's true. It actually contains the, if you got it, that thing on there, you know the you know how the brake pads are sort of in there? Of course, I was, might dispute that because some of the, the brake pads typically like to go in that uh, that part that the caliper fits into, you know that I call it a cage. Yeah. You know they like to go in that cage, you know. But I mean, these people want you to say true. When replacing a glazed rotor, service only the side of the vehicle <laughs> that's oh. affected. That's false. When using a micrometer, you only need to measure the thickness of the rotor in one place. Oh. That's false. You know you're supposed to measure it in several places, unless you measure it in one place and it's too thin in that one place. Then you discard the rotor. You got me. Uh, Five. You know what most people do anyway, instead of doing a lot of uh, measuring in four or five or six places around the rotor, they just go ahead and machine them anyway. They just go ahead and make them right to start with, you know? I mean, because you know you don't want them to be glazed. You know, you don't, you don't want them to be a nice new... Uh, yeah, and remember, you always wash the rotors with soap and water when you're done to make sure you get all the little filings out of there, because if you don't, you're probably going to wind up with some noise. Yeah. And that is... Uh, that's standard procedure. Bendix publishes that in their, you know, literature about machine and rotors. Um, disc brakes, mu brakes must be manually adjusted for brake pad wear. Have any of you guys seen uh, on any of these brake systems, these disc brakes? You, as, who's that was putting brakes on the other day? And there was these funky little wire pieces that went that had little holes drilled in them. The, no, they didn't hold them together. You know what those are for? It's a little. They got little springs. They're little spring-loaded things, and they're actually there's little holes drilled in the edge of the pad line. I mean, of the metal part of the pad, and these things go in there, and then you put the uh, rotor on. And basically, what they're for is whenever you let off the brake, those little things pull those brake pads away from the rotors, so they don't drag. That's the only reason they're there. No, I'm, you know, you're talking about the anti-rattle. Yeah, you're talking about you know, the little wires. Yeah, the little V-shaped wires. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, and they, uh, I was going to draw that, but I'm not going to waste time on that. But basically, when you see those little v those skinny little V-shaped wires are easy to put in there. And they're basically there to keep those pads from dragging on the rotor all the time. And it basically helps the pads run cooler. So think about that. A lot of times you'll see those on non-vented rotors, too. Because the pads need to run. It helps the rotor get cool off and it helps the pad cool off. If you've got a little bit of drag on the pads, it's going to heat the rotors up, right? Mm -hmm. And all that. So if, it, if the rubber part of the caliper is not sufficient all the time to pull the pad away from there, I mean, they got that on some of them. You can actually get a, a universal setup like that to put on your brakes if you don't like them dragging on the rotors, believe it or not. I've actually seen those in some of these trade magazines I read. But I'm, I've never bought any, but I've seen them in trade. All right. Um, let's see. Loose pads or hardware used to attach them can cause rattling noises and disc brakes. Um, on a car brake lathe allows you to machine a rotor while it's still on the vehicle. And we've done that here. Make sure the master cylinder is full of brake fluid before removing the calipers. What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to draw some fluid out. Why? Yeah, well, it won't let them go back in, but what it does is whenever you're pushing the, the pistons back in, it won't make the master cylinder run over. Right. Who was that? We were talking about that. Was that y'all? Y'all said, look, there's something dripping out from under the car. Cause yeah. <laughs> and I said, it's actually running the master cylinder over, you know. I mean, do, do you know anybody that does that, though? I mean, I guarantee you, even over at the Honda store or wherever you happen to be working, yeah. you're not going to see anybody that pulls fluid out of the master cylinder. They fluid is pouring out on the floor. <laughs> they don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Just get some out of there so it doesn't run over. But make sure you check your fluid when you're done. Okay. Um, 
Well, let's see. Uh, after the new disc, after the new disc brake components have been installed, the driver should avoid hard stops for 100 to 200 miles. Uh, believe it or not, that's that's actually true. But I don't know how in the world you can avoid a hard stop if a horse runs out in front of you or something. You know what I mean? That's kind of silly. Oh, yeah. And we've actually seen some of these pads that we put on there that will stink and smoke and you know and everything when you first put them together. But did you know there's a 30 30 30 thing you're supposed to do, right? 30 stops from uh, 30 miles an hour with 30 seconds cool down in between. 30 stops, normal stops, not, not panic stops. 30 stops from 30 miles an hour with a 30 second cool down in between each. That's how you're supposed to season your brake pads if you do that right. You know, I'm, once again, that comes from Bendix. I got a video that I started to show you the other day but the disc is messed up. But long and short, it's 30, 30, 30. You know, so remember that. 30 stops, 30 miles an hour. Am I talking about normal stops? You don't have to do no stupid stops, right? 30 stops, 30 miles an hour, 30 second cool down. I got it? All right, so let's see. Uh, all wear indicators are connected to the metal part of the disc pad. False. False. Number five was disc brakes do not need to be manually adjusted for a pad wear. You should know that. Come on. Yeah. Were you thinking clearly or what? No. You weren't thinking clearly. Make sure that from now on you think clearly always. Don't ever have brain fog in here, Dr. It's not allowed. Except for me, I can have brain fog if I want to. Okay, now then. Uh, Eleven. The four major parts of a disc brake system are... You know those? Very good. That's mounting brads, mounting brackets, calipers, brake pads, and rotors. At rest, the normal clearance between the rotor and the brake pad is what? One millimeter. Actually, zero. <laughs> and, you know, it's not better not be one millimeter because you had to move too far to get back on there. But, uh, when brakes are applied, when the brakes are applied, the vehicle weight is transferred. Yeah, that's the only way to go toward the front. Pedal pull, unless you're going backwards. Pedal pulsations may be due to what? All of the above, loose wheel bearings, rotor with excessive run out, ABS brakes, all of the above. If the vehicle does not brake when the pedal is fully depressed, it may be caused by? Both B and C. C, B and C. The piston being too far from the rotor, low fluid, low fluid level in the master cylinder. What happens if you let your brake pads wear out to the point that they completely just go on and, uh, you know, if, if they wear out bad enough, what happens? What happens? <laughs> tell somebody, somebody tell me. Two of you guys tell me. If your disc pads, if your disc brakes wear out enough, what happens? The pad falls out. Okay. And uh, yeah, what was funny was both Johnny and Quincy experienced that same anomaly. Except you were that was when you were in dual enrollment. And so, and furthermore, both of them drove the vehicle up here <laughs> like that. <laughs> I drove mine for a week after that. Yeah. So With, yeah. You just said to be careful yeah. to stop. Yeah, you didn't have the money. But, like but I mean, the actual brake away. caliper, the caliper itself, though, there was nothing left of the brake pad at all. The caliper itself was digging into the rotor. You know, that was just really wild. Yeah. And now Quincy needs a rotor. Quincy, you got money? On mine, uh, the rotor wasn't messed up or nothing. I was just coming to a stop or whatever, and the brake pad just now, one time, uh, if you don't measure those rotors and you just keep machining them, you can get them thin enough to where those pads can shoot out of there when they're not that worn out. And Alan had that problem. The guy that I go to lunch with, he was driving a little 93 uh, Camry that he had. And he was turning, you know, from Tartan Pines, how you turn and come up this way? He was turning there, and um, he, he hit the brake one time, and he had good brakes. The next time, his brake pedal went to the floor. And he almost drove under a big truck that was going through there. And he had to go off on the side of the road. And uh, that was, you know, scary. But anyway, he had to have some brakes done on that. One time he called me from uh, Perry store out there. And he says, can you uh, come up here and get me my car is trying to overheat? And I said, okay. And so I went up there and a radiator had split. And it was running really, really, really hot. And you know how they act when the head gasket is blown where it's just punching yeah. water out, you know, making erupting out the... I said, this head gasket's blown. We're probably going to put a head gasket on this car. And so he said, okay, well, you know, so we switched it off. The record dragged it in over here. And when it got in here, I was going to show the people in here, this is what a blown head gasket looks like. 
and that thing didn't act blown anymore. It was just smooth and it just, you know, opened the thermostat. <laughs> I don't know what was going on. I mean, I'd have sworn on a court, on a, on my, a court of law that that had like a blown head gasket out there at the store. Then when it got back to the shop and it cooled off, and I guess everything normalized or something. I don't know. I'm just wow. totally flabbergasted by that set of circumstances. Anyway, we didn't put a head gasket on it because there was no need to. And he drove it for a long time after that. Okay, let's see. 16, the parts of the brake, uh, disc brake system that convert vehicle motion to heat are the what? That is not a hard question. You can use what to clean disc brake parts? Uh, what? Oil-based solvents? Are you kidding? Yeah. What happens if somebody puts oil in the brake fluid reservoir? It swells all the rubber up, and then the brakes lock up, and the car won't go. It makes a mess out of the whole brake system, and it costs a lot of money to get that straightened out. Because you got to replace every doggone thing. Everything's got a rubber part in it's got to be in place, and all of the uh, are going to be replaced, and all of the uh, fluids got to be uh, purged out of there. I mean, it's just nasty, and um, and it can be really expensive if you know can't do it stuff. Okay, um, let's see. Number 17 is basically D, neither A nor B. You know, so, neither A nor B. Okay, number 18. After removing the disc brake rotor, you should do what first? You should. Do you think you're going to find anything? No. Clean the rotor with brake solvent. Clean that thing up. You know what, y'all? Before removing the rotor, you should remove the what? What about A and B if it's got, see this is thinking about old those old rotors like what's See that's what I was asking. Yeah, yeah, there is a cotter pin that's holding that nut that holds the bearing on there. Um, the inner wheel bearings are actually going to come out with it. All right, now you know, and you there is a bear, there is a sheet on here where you guys are supposed to pull a rotor off and pack some wheel bearings. Have you seen that one? Hey Richard, this Ford truck parked over here on the back, did it belong to one of your students? That one. Can, can you move it where they can cut the grass? It's not that one. He's talking about over there. It's that one there. That's yours. Can you move it? Uh, you got a key? Uh, you don't have the key? Okay. Well, apparently he don't have the key. You had the key the other day, though. What happened? I gave it to them. Well, yeah, they need to. we need to be able to move that thing, whatever happens. But... They, they haven't been able to cut the grass the last two times on that side right yeah. there. I was just trying to get them to move. Mm -hmm. All right. right. Yeah, appreciate All right. it. All right. See, that was bothering me, too. You know, that's one of the reasons I moved that little red car over there. All right. So, um, let me see. 20, electrical wear indicators warn the driver of excessive brake wear by doing what? Hey. If the car pulls to one side during braking, the cause may be... Well, that's a pretty good answer, but what else can cause it to pull? Besides a seized caliper, what else can cause it to pull? It wouldn't be the caliper being loose on the pad, with the pad being loose with the caliper. Right? Not really, but what about your brake hoses? You know, when you turn, those hoses do like they do? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. See that? Yeah. All right. Okay. So, uh, basically, a seized caliper is what these people want to do. All right, now then.